Let's talk about uh, antenna coverage. Uh, I think there's some fundamentals of, of RF antennas that uh, a lot of RC hobbyists may be missing. And um, RF is actually what I do for a living. Uh, so RC is a very, uh, very fitting hobby for me. And uh, maybe I have something to bring to the table. <clears throat> what we're looking at right now are the vertical and horizontal antenna coverage graphs for a uh, 3dbi dipole omni antenna and this is uh, it, it's a very sort of basic antenna it's the kind of antenna you might have sticking off the back of your wi-fi access point and it is not dissimilar from the type of antenna that is often hanging off of an rc receiver the uh, type of antenna hanging off of an rc receiver is typically a quarter wave dipole uh, this may be closer to a half wave dipole that we're seeing here uh, but they're very close to each other. What we're seeing in these graphs is, is vertical and horizontal coverage. And the way you can think about that is, in horizontal coverage, we imagine that we are looking down on the top of the antenna. So if the antenna is a little, uh, sometimes they're called rubber ducky antennas, the kind that you might see hanging off the back of a Wi-Fi access point, just a little black stub it's a, probably the kind that you've got hanging off of your, uh, your your RC transmitter is probably the same thing. If you imagine that it's pointing straight up in the air and you're looking straight down on it, that's the horizontal coverage pattern that you're going to see. And then the vertical coverage pattern is we imagine that it is sticking straight up and down here and we are looking at it edge on, and that's the vertical coverage graph. Those are sometimes also called the azimuth and elevation as well. Same thing, vertical and horizontal. Now this red line on the graph shows the relative strength of the signal at various locations around the antenna. So if you imagine that the antenna was sitting in a field and you walked away from the antenna a certain distance, it doesn't matter what the distance is, a fixed distance, and then you walked a perfect circle around the antenna, you would see variance in the signal strength from the antenna according to what this red line is doing. Now we can see that in the top-down view that the line is very nearly a circle. And that's why we call this type of antenna an omnidirectional antenna. It means that when you look at it top-down, it puts out basically the same amount of coverage in all directions. We can see that it's not a perfect circle. There are some areas that are slightly more and slightly less than others, but it's pretty close to a circle. Now, an omnidirectional dipole antenna is not omnidirectional in the elevation plane or the vertical plane. And we can see here, again, imagine that the antenna is pointing straight up and down here. We can see that directly above and directly below the antenna, the red line comes in and there's a substantial reduction in, in propagation in those directions. It's a little hard to read, but this line here is marked minus 3 dB, minus 10 dB, minus 20 dB, 30 and 40 dB. And we can see that this red line goes to about minus 40 dB when you're directly above and directly below the antenna, whereas here we're at 0 dB, basically. Um, I'm not going to get into a deep discussion of what is a dB. That is a topic that, that is, uh, you can spend a lot of time teaching that topic. Uh, and some people will get it immediately. And some people take a long time to get it, so I'm, I'm not even going to go there. Suffice it to say that, that this line is sort of the benchmark for, for signal strength. It's not an absolute value. It's just saying that whatever you measure here, well, if you're close to the antenna, you'll measure a strong signal. If you're far from the antenna, you'll measure a weak signal. But whatever you measure here, you're going to measure proportionally less here and some proportion less here. So the further in the red line goes, the weaker the signal is. And the closer to this 0 dB line, the stronger the signal is. And, but it's all relative to itself. The, for obviously, the closer you are to the antenna, the stronger the signal you're going to measure. And the further away, the weaker the signal you're going to measure. So um, what can we take from this? Uh, one thing that it can be confusing about antenna coverage to some people is that you say, well, I've got a very weak signal here directly above and directly below whatever direction this dipole antenna is pointing. And by the way, that's that's why if you've got uh, an antenna on your transmitter, 
you don't want to point it straight at your plane. If you point the antenna straight at your plane, you're putting your plane directly in this null, and you're actually getting the worst coverage possible. Whereas if you point your antenna straight uh, edge on to your plane, you're putting your plane or your copter or whatever you're flying, you're putting it in this plane here, and you're putting it in the strongest part of the antenna's coverage. Okay, so, so that's one way that understanding these coverage patterns can help us. But if you're close enough to the transmitter, the, remember that the, the, the receiver needs to get a certain amount of signal energy to receive the signal and to not uh, have a dropout. Okay, and it doesn't care where it is within the antenna's coverage graph as long as it's getting enough energy. So you could be located in, uh, you know, this is 90 degrees relative to the antenna. You could be 120 degrees relative to the antenna. And as long as you're close enough, you'll get enough signal strength to have good signal. And that's why when you're on the ground, if you point your antenna straight at your, your, pl your plane or your copter, you won't get a dropout. There's still plenty of signal. You would be getting a lot more signal if it was pointed edge on. But it's a case of once you've got enough, more doesn't really matter. Okay, all you have to have is enough. And, and every antenna is going to have a coverage graph like this, although, uh, especially in the RC world, unfortunately, they're often not published. Um, in, the, in, in the professional RF world, you'll always be able to get antenna coverage graphs because it's really hard to evaluate if an antenna is going to work for you without seeing its coverage graph. But the RC world, they, they often don't do that, and so be it. It is what it is. Now let's take a look at this coverage graph. This is a directional antenna. A directional antenna, an example of that in the RC world, might be a helical antenna or a patch antenna. Uh, either of those are good examples of directional antennas. And we can see here that a directional antenna, this by the way, is the um, top-down view. Okay, And since this is not an omnidirectional antenna, we have to pick a direction that the antenna is assumed to be pointing. And the convention is usually that the antenna is assumed to be pointing straight up. Sometimes it is pointing to the right. If you look at the pattern graph, you can pretty much tell where the antenna is supposed to be pointing because with the directional antenna, the strongest part of the coverage is going to be wherever the antenna is pointing. And we can see that with this antenna, the signal is very strong in this direction and then it weakens. It's got somewhat less signal here. It's down to about, say, negative 15 dB down at 180 degrees. And then as you get back past the 180 degree point, it gets much weaker. There's a small set of back lobes, which are still present, but, but weak. And we can see that that's that antenna's coverage pattern. And the one thing I want you to see here is this marker of the 3 dB beam width. So I told you that RC uh, antennas often don't have their coverage graphs published, um, but they'll often publish the beam width, and they'll say something like it's a 45 degree beam width or whatever. Uh, what they're referring to there is you take the point in the antenna's coverage that is the strongest, and then of course as you move away from that point, the signal will get weaker. That's how a directional antenna works. By the way, if we compare that to an omni antenna, there is no point here that is the strongest. It's all pretty much the same. That's why this is an omni antenna. Whereas with a directional antenna, we'll have a point that's the strongest. And then as we move away from that point, in other words, instead of the antenna being aimed directly at the plane, maybe the antenna is aimed slightly to the right of the plane or slightly to the left of the plane. As that happens, the signal will get weaker and weaker. And there is a point where it will be about as half, about half as strong as it was. And that equates to a, a loss of 3 dB, and that point is referred to as the 3 dB beam width. So some antennas will have a wider beam width, and some antennas will have a shorter beam width. And the 3 dB beam width is just the standard way of measuring how the, the you know, sort of, instead of trying to give everybody a picture of the antenna pattern, we just say this antenna has a 45 degree beam width, etc. So this antenna, by the way, this antenna has, looks like approximately plus 30 to minus 30 degrees in its 3 dB beam width, which is approximately a 60 dB, 60 degree beam width. Okay. Uh, an important concept to take from this is that when you see an antenna advertised as having a 45 degree, a 60 degree, a 90 degree beam width, that doesn't mean that once you get outside of that beam width, you got no signal at all. 
we can see that when we get outside this beam width, we there's still plenty of signal. We were at about 10 dB down at about 165 degrees, it looks like here, you know, and, and likewise on the other side of the graph. But depending on how far away from the antenna the plane is, even after that 10 dB loss, there may be enough signal strength left over to still have good coverage. So the thing to take away from this is that if you've got an antenna with a, a directional antenna with a 90 degree, 60 degree, 45 degree beam width, whatever, if you're close enough, you can still fly outside of that beam width. You'll just have weaker strength, but you may have enough. And that you could roughly imagine this shape, whatever it is for your particular antenna, as being sort of the the shape of your usable coverage area. So if you're going to fly outside your beam width, well, if you're if you're a kilometer and a half away, your signal may be so weak that as soon as you get out of the beam width, you start to you have dropouts, right? But if you're close enough in, you could be in the beam width and have plenty of signal strength, and you can go out of the beam width and still have enough. Maybe not quite as much, but still still enough. Okay. The same thing is true with the Omni. You know, if you fly directly over your head while you're you while you're uh, say you're flying FPV and you fly directly over your head, uh, you may notice that there's a slight breakup in the signal as you fly directly overhead as you go through this null. But the thing is that you're so close to yourself anyway that probably you're still going to have fine signal. Whereas if you were at a thousand feet elevation. 1,000 feet AGL, you know, or 1,500 feet AGL, the worst thing you could do would be to fly directly over your own head because then you'd be so far up that you would you would have a weak signal and you might have a dropout. Okay. Uh, a few other things to say. You know, we talked about how we can have different beam widths here. And in general, the higher the gain of an antenna, the narrower the beam width. Antennas get gain by focusing the, the, the energy that they output. But an antenna is a passive device. It can't make there be more energy coming out of it than was put into it in the first place. So if you go to a high gain antenna, the thing to remember is that you haven't got more coverage, you've just got a narrower, more focused coverage. So you'll get more coverage in a narrower beam, but you'll have less coverage outside the beam. And the same thing is true for a, an omni dipole. Uh, omni antennas get their additional coverage when you go from say a 3 dB dipole to a 5 or an 8 or a 9 dB dipole, they get their coverage by squishing this pattern down to be flatter. And the takeaway from that is that actually high gain omnis are actually not a good choice when there's going to be relative changes in elevation between the antenna and the device that's receiving the signal. Uh, in other words, like an RC plane. Uh, the problem is, let's say you go to a, like a 12 or a 15 dB omni antenna, this pattern is going to be so flat, you're standing on the ground, you're holding your transmitter, your high gain antenna is hanging off the end of your, your transmitter, and as soon as your plane gets up above 50 feet, suddenly it's, it's in this area, which instead of being this tall, fat lobe, it's a thin, flat, narrow lobe, and you get up outside of it, now you don't have any coverage. So in fact, a high gain antenna is a, is a relatively poor choice for a, uh, a high gain omni antenna is a relatively poor choice for RC flight and FPV because you have elevation changes. Unless, like I could imagine a scenario where I mounted a, a, real, a medium gain antenna up on top of my house, you know, on a pole. Well, at that point, you may, depending on how high you fly, right, you may end up with a scenario where your flight is all within the beam width. But just because an antenna has higher gain doesn't mean that it's necessarily better. It just means that the signal is more focused. And more focused is only better if what you need is more focused. Likewise, with this directional antenna, if you were going to go out and do long distance runs, you might want a 14 or a 15 dB patch. But the beam width on that might only be 10 degrees. I don't know. I just made that number up. Don't hold me to it. At which point, if it's only 10 degree beam width, you can fly straight out and straight back, but you better not let the wind blow you out of that cone or you're going you're gonna to lose your signal very quickly. Okay, so that's a little bit of basic stuff about antennas. Uh, I got more to say about antennas, but I'm up to 15 minutes now. I'm going to call this one quits. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was educational. And as always, happy flying.